time to bring in our panel. On the right, Philip Stutz, Republican strategist and president of the eponymously named Philip Stutz and Company. And on the left, the Washington director of MoveOn.org and host of The Good Fight, Ben Wickler. Ben, Islamophobia, is that a cause for what happened yesterday in France? You know, J.D., what we have in France is two extreme, unstable, violent, hateful young men trying to impose their will on the rest of us. This is about their going completely off the rails, being part of what's essentially a cultish, uh, fringe, extreme movement. And that's, that's something that all of us, I think, can roundly condemn. Uh, and I think that that condemnation doesn't have anything to do with Islamophobia. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, these guys are responsible for what they did. And, uh, you know, anyone who, who might have been involved needs to be held accountable for it. Let me offer not a friendly amendment, but a friendly addendum. Islamic extremists. Would you agree? Sure. They call themselves Islamic right. extremists. Good. But, you know, I have to I have to tell you, uh, you know, for a lot of these guys, they have about as much to do with what the vast majority of Muslims believe as the uh, Manson cultists have to do with the Beatles. Uh, these are people who mostly are killing Muslims and are as hated by Muslims uh, as they are hated by the rest of us. Well, Ben, let me, uh, I, I thank you for those distinctions, but it stands in stark contrast to what we hear from the official lexicon at the Pentagon and the State Department as proffered by the current administration. Philip, the word Islamic terror or Islamist or Islamofascism, all those terms have been purged from the lexicon officially. Is that a wise thing to do in the United States? No, I, I don't think it is. And my, my dispute with Ben is he thinks it's a single act. It could be. But how do we know that already? I mean, how is this? How do we know this is not connected to ISIS? How do we know that they were not recruited? We know one of the suspects had been a terrorist for over 10 years. And I think the problem I have, J.D., more than anything, is that even if this is an isolated incident, why doesn't the larger Muslim and Islamic world speak out against this? Why, if they are, uh, if they are not the spokespeople or the leaders of their religion, which the media somewhat portrays them to be, where, why aren't the great Muslims, the, the peaceful Muslims of this country, standing up and fighting back against these guys? You don't see that anywhere. And, and, and that's a real big problem that they can't, you know, sort of self uh, self uh, uh, manage themselves. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a mess. Well, ben, go ahead. I'd actually disagree with that. I mean, it, the, the instant these attacks were carried out in France, the leading Muslims in France, as one, came out in condemnation. Mahmoud Abbas, who's, you know, no, uh, yeah. no popular figure for, for, for a lot of us, uh, came out and called these heinous crimes against society and against religion. Right. I mean, these right. attacks have been condemned yeah, by sure. leading sure. Muslims across the globe. I get the words, but this we're going on 14 years of this, 15 years of this. If you think back to the original bombing, bombing of the World Center, uh, Trade Center back in 1992 or 93, we're going on 20 years of this, or tw more than 20, or 20 years. So why are people fighting back against these extremist words? That is not doing the job. Look, there's... Go ahead, Ben. It looks like we may be having a problem with Ben's uh, transmission there. Uh, let me tell you what. We're going to step aside and uh, clear up that technical pause, and we will continue the discussion. There are more questions, more issues uh, to be debated, and that's why Philip Stutz and uh, Ben Wickler will emerge from their frozen state, although it is pretty cold in the environs of Washington, D.C. today with that winter blast of air. We'll talk more in a, in a serious vein, continuing the discussion of yesterday's attack and what previous attacks have meant uh, to American politics and our decision making and some other issues that are out there for us as relevant as today's headlines. You'll want to stay here with us on America's Forum on Newsmax TV, the panel discussion Featuring our friends Philip and Ben will continue. You keep it right here with us. Let's continue the panel discussion. Bring back Philip Stutz, Republican strategist and president of Philip Stutz and Company, and also Ben Wickler, 
Washington director of MoveOn.org and host of The Good Fight. Ben, to you first. Should media outlets publish these cartoons or show them? Ben? You know, I think it's up it's up to each media outlet to decide whether it makes sense for their editorial strategy to run the cartoons. But I will say this, no one should run, no one should not run those cartoons out of fear. That is exactly the wrong response. And, you know, even if you or I find a particular cartoon or image disgusting or offensive, I will fight to the death. And I think all of us should fight to make sure that everyone has the right to make those decisions for themselves. That's the essence of freedom of speech. And I think it's up to every media outlet at this moment, more than ever, to not act out of fear, but to act out of their own editorial contents as they should every day of the year. Uh, is it the responsibility, Philip, the responsibility of the media to be respectful of other religions? I think the responsibility of the media is to report the news. I mean, you have NBC coming out and saying they will not show the cartoon because it could be viewed as, uh, you know, it could be viewed as insensitive, which I think is just an outrageous quote that they came out with. And, and J.D., I would even say this. Did NBC self-censor the federal government's words and actions after the handling of the Waco siege, which was the root cause of Timothy McVeigh's bombing of Oklahoma City? No, they didn't do that. They did this. They're self-censoring themselves now because they are afraid uh, of offending Muslims around the world, which is just, again, outrageous when it comes to what the press stands for. And not only outrageous, but Ben, the whole notion of being hypocritical because you have the press choosing to, to self-censor, not publish things considered blasphemous to Islam. Is it hypocritical that many of these same publications engage in comments about Christianity and Judaism that its respective adher adherents could believe are inflammatory? Well, I would say some of the cartoons that uh, news media outlets aren't showing are incredibly offensive to a lot of Christians as well. Uh, this morning I was talking to a taxi driver who was describing to me a, a very pornographic anti-Christian cartoon that ran in Charlie Hebdo, and I made the point to him that even if he totally disagrees with that cartoon and finds it offensive, it's absolutely their right to run it, and they should never be threatened with violence for offending anybody. That's, that's what free speech is all about. So to my mind, you know, there are a lot of things that uh, American media outlets won't run that are offensive to, to you and me and everyone else, but no one should be not running things simply out of fear. That is the wrong position. Let's bring it back to the United States. Obviously, we see these attacks internationally and we wonder about our own homeland security. The Department of Homeland Security still needs to be funded. The president offered his executive amnesty. Uh, Philip, are you confident the Republican majorities in the House and Senate can cobble together uh, funding that will ban the executive amnesty but have adequate funding for uh, Homeland Security? 20 seconds to you both. Philip, first to you. Yeah, great question. I think that the Republicans will use the current situation in France to try to push through the budget because they don't want to have the fight leading into the 2016 presidential race. What, what about it, Ben? 15 seconds for your thoughts. Uh, I think that this it would be totally nuts for the Republicans to try to threaten another shutdown at, at this kind of moment to undo things the president's already done. I don't think that most Republicans want to do it, but there might be a couple that try to pull it off, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Or would it be if the president refused to take the funding that had strong language against his executive amnesty, would it not be the president? engaging in shutting down government over a very tough thing. A topic we'll have to continue with later. Gentlemen, to you both, we thank you for the time. There's more ahead on America's Forum.